Hello and welcome to this case-based learning module number two. This is case number two and it is actually a molar. We have a tooth number 19 that was diagnosed with irreversible pulpitis and the proposed treatment was a non-surgical root canal therapy. Now we use the basic endosequence instrumentation and the hydraulic condensation technique and as you can see here in this x-ray uh, the tooth had a recent restoration that was very deep close to the pulp and uh, what we always do before we get started on a case is we use our digital radiograph to make a measurement, a pre-estimated length, somewhere between 20 to 22 millimeters is the length. I'm using a handy dam here to uh, isolate the tooth using a 13A Hufridi clamp and then I'm inverting the, uh, the rubber dam. You can see how quickly and easily you can isolate these individual teeth. Now I'm using these bite blocks by Common Sense Dental and you can see that the the way this horseshoe shape that these bite blocks have allows you to get your fingers in there and work. You always have to make sure that you're working on the right tooth and here after doing that we do an endo ice test before we get started and the purpose of the endo ice test is to confirm our anesthesia and we expect that the patient is not feeling anything. To begin the procedure, we use our 5909, which is uh, from the Real World Endo Access Kit, which is a, uh, a disc diamond, and that flattens the cusps, that gives us nice reference points and takes the tooth out of bite. We then follow that up with the 1558 saber cut, which is a crosscut Fisher Burr. It's very efficient and it's great for molars. This is great for making your outline form. And that's my to-go-to -to burr in the Real World Endo Access Kit. And you can see how quickly, using here the, uh, the Braster electric handpiece, this burr is able to make a very quick uh, preparation. So following the outline form, we go down, we've gone through the composite and just a tiny bit more and we can get into the pulp. Now what I always do is I, my goal is to always just nick the pulp uh, quickly and then follow that up with an intrapulpal. At this point, it's important to notice that the patient is completely numb. They are not feeling the intrapulpal. What the intrapulpal does at this point is a guarantee that the rest of the procedure will be eventless at the same time because of some of the epinephrine in the uh, anesthetic, it will decrease the, uh, the hemorrhagic pulp, which is inflamed, especially in these cases of emergencies. Now we then use the 1558 again and follow that up uh, to remove and unroof the pulp chamber. So we're continuing on the outline form here to completely remove the roof of the pulp chamber. And uh, we check periodically. After using the out, after the outline form is complete, we're now using a round number four on a slow speed bar. Again, the electric slow speed bar, and the purpose of doing this uh, step is to remove the the triangular ridge that reflects the invagination of the CEJ inside the pulp. And by removing that, what we allow ourselves is to have straight line access to the apical area of the tooth. It's very important that this step is done. So after removing that triangular part of dentin in the, uh, around the CEJ area, now I'm using my E14D ultrasonic tip on the Varios 350 uh, to just blend everything in. And I'm also even using the tip as an explorer. And as you can see here, everything looks nice and clean and we can see the beginning of the, uh, of the canals. So I'm pre-curving my first hand files, a size 10 hand file, and I'm going by an estimated length of 20 millimeters. I'm not trying to go all the way down to the apex and get a working length, but based on the pre-measurement from the radiograph, I was expecting somewhere between 20 to 22 millimeters on my lengths, and I'm just taking a pre-curved size 10 and see if it does go down to about 20 millimeters. And in this case, since it's a fairly straightforward case, it does go down to the, uh, to the, to the 20 millimeters estimated working length. And that kind of confirms for me that I have 20 millimeters of space available for instrumentation. So, and that's all I need. As long as my rotary instruments do not go beyond that, I will be good. So I'm using here the expediter file. The expediter file is the first file in the endo sequence technique. If you recall, that's the screening file that tells you which package of files to open. If you don't remember this step, please go back and watch the case-based learning module one, which goes over the technique uh, 
uh, in more detail. Here, because the endo sequence expedited file goes in a good uh, three-quarter of the way, that we're dealing with a medium package uh, file. So we open up a medium package of file, which is sizes 40 through 25. Now, at the beginning, I'd like to just give myself this little extra bit of coronal shaping, so I'm using a bias zero. This is a size 25 tip with an 08 taper, and all I'm doing is just going in there. You could use either a bias one or you could use a gates glidden bar, whichever way you prefer. Uh, an orifice shaper or a gates glidden bar will do the same thing. All I'm doing is just enlarging the upper one third of the canal a little bit more. Please pay attention that I'm using my ultrasonic and water uh, in a very um, deliberate way and constantly because I'm actually using the water as my main irrigant for the first half of instrumentation. Because the combination of water and ultrasonic is the most efficient way to remove the gross debris that is generated during this early phase of instrumentation. Now I'm beginning the instrumentation with the first endo sequence file, which is a size 40. As you recall, the endo sequence instrumentation is a crown down, so we go from the largest to the smallest, and we use these passes of three, passes of one, two, three, and then we take the file out, and then we wipe the flutes clean. It's important to wipe the flutes clean, and you do two passes with each file in each canal. So I'm now doing the mesiolingual, one, two, three, and I'm out, and uh, we, my assistant wipes it with an alcohol gauze, and then one, two, three, and then we wipe this. Now we're done with the size 40. We're moving one size down. Again, as you can see, I'm using the ultrasonic with water here to irrigate the debris that I've generated from with the size 40 out. And now I'm beginning to put a little bit of EDTA in there too to just facilitate the instrumentation. Now moving to a size 35, one, two, three, out, wipe, and then one, two, three, out, wipe. And then to the mesiolingual, one, two, three, out, wipe, and one, two, three, out. Okay, now, Please remember, and what I meant, forgot to mention, is that the first time when I did the 40, my 40 did reach down to about uh, 20 millimeters, all the way down on the distal root. So for the subsequent files, I no longer have to do uh, the distal root because I've already reached my estimated length, and I don't want to go deeper than my estimated length until I have measured with my apex locator. So now I'm using the 30, and I did the two mesial roots with two passes of three times each, with followed by wiping each time. And now I'm doing the size 25. You can also use the ultrasonic and water again and put some more fresh EDTA in there. And now you can see that the 25 also reached the 20 millimeters estimated length. It's very important not to get very ambitious and push these files. Just allow them to go down on their own, and if there is space, they will go down um, to where they can, as long as we are short of our work, of estimated working length. So now I'm using my ultrasonic, and put some uh, hypochlorite now in there, and then I'm using the uh, Endovax uh, macro cannula to suction off any of the hypochlorite from the chamber. I only want to have hypochlorite in the canals and nothing in the chamber. Now it's time to do our working length measurement. The benefit of doing, and I'm using PAL, which is the Precision Apex Locator, also by Brassler, and uh, this is not a live picture of PAL, so it's just basically a stock picture, but what it does is it gives you the same series of beeps and so on like all the other Apex Locators, and it gives you the length. Now on the distal, I found that I had a working length of 21 millimeters, and on the uh, mesials, I'm now making that measurement. So it's important not to rush the apex right from the get-go as you start instrumentation. An estimated working length is good because it gives you some guidelines as to how far you can go and how short you should stay before you actually uh, do your instrumentation. And here, as you can see, now we have measured the mesiolingual to be about 22 millimeters. And now we're going to go with the mesiobuckle. 
And so we are within that safe range. We estimated the lengths to be about 20 to 22 millimeters, and we already have 21 on the distal and 22 on the mesolingual. And on the mesiobuccal, we measure it uh, to be also about 22 millimeters. So what I'd like to do usually at this step of the way is to take a radiograph. Here, because our axis preparation is fairly uh, small, then I just suffice to put two files in there, in the mesolingual and the distal, and take a um, radiograph. So digital radiographs are wonderful because they allow us to have immediate information, almost immediate information, about our length measurements and some of the other information we need to have in order to make our uh, measurements. And here, as you can see, within a few seconds of taking the x-ray, I have already the image. And I can see that the measurement that I took with my apex locator is fairly accurate. I'm comfortable with these lengths. And I will proceed to, uh, to do the, the rest of the instrumentation. Now, we have set the lengths. At this point, it's important because I started to manipulate the patient's cheek and face and put that bite block back in there. I've contaminated my gloves. It's important to change your gloves to clean gloves again so that you don't carry the bacteria on your gloves that after touching the patient's face and their saliva. So I confirm the lengths again here. Uh, and then now we set all of the four files in the endosequence setup to the shortest length, which is 20.